Okay, so you're looking to really get up to speed on some big topics quickly. That's the idea. Great. Today, we're doing a deep dive into, well, a true space legend, the Hubble Space Telescope. Ah, Hubble. Definitely an icon. Right. Our mission today is to sort of unpack why it's so celebrated, its impact as a whole story. And we've gathered quite a bit on its history, the big discoveries, and uh, where things stand now. Plus, a little tip for free space courses later. Perfect. So let's start at the beginning, the launch, April 1990. Yeah, April 24th, 1990. Went up on the space shuttle Discovery. Huge expectations. But it wasn't smooth sailing immediately, was it? I seem to recall issues. Not at all. That's uh, putting it mildly. The first images came back blurry. A major problem. Blurry. After all that effort and expense. Wow. That must have been, well, stressful. Absolutely. It turned out there was a tiny, tiny flaw in the main mirror. An almost unbelievably small error, but enough to ruin the view. So this amazing instrument was basically nearsighted. Pretty much, yeah. But that's where the story gets really interesting, actually, the recovery. You mean the servicing mission? Exactly. SM-1, the first servicing mission in 1993. Astronauts went up there. And basically gave it glasses. That's a great way to put it. They installed corrective optics, CoStar, which fixed the flaw. It was an incredible feat of engineering and, frankly, bravery by the astronauts. And absolutely crucial, it saved the mission. It really did. Suddenly, Hubble could see the universe the way it was meant to. Crystal clear. And once that happened... The discoveries just started rolling in, right? Big ones. Oh, fundamentally game-changing ones. It, uh, for instance, measuring the universe's expansion rate, the Hubble constant. Right. That was a huge debate before Hubble, wasn't it? How fast, how old the universe was. Precisely. Hubble's observations dramatically reduced the uncertainty. It gave us a much better handle on the age and scale of the cosmos. And that led to other things, too, like understanding dark energy. Exactly. The data suggested the expansion wasn't just happening, it was accelerating that pointed towards this mysterious force, dark energy, making up most of the universe. Mind-blowing stuff. And then there was that image, the deep field. Ah, the 1995 Hubble deep field. Iconic. Just staring at a tiny, seemingly empty patch of sky for days. And finding. Thousands of galaxies. Tiny, distant, ancient galaxies. It was like opening a window onto the early universe. Changed our whole perspective on cosmic evolution. It's almost hard to picture, just layers upon layers of galaxies. It really is. And Hubble also helped us map dark matter, the invisible stuff that holds galaxies together. How does it see something invisible? Through gravity. Dark matter's gravity bends the light from galaxies behind it like a lens. Hubble observes that distortion, that gravitational lensing. So it's using distortions to map the invisible. Clever. Did it look closer to home, too? Exoplanets? Absolutely. Hubble was a pioneer there. It made the first atmospheric studies of planets outside our solar system. Found things like water vapor. On planets orbiting other stars, that's incredible. A huge step in searching for life elsewhere. Yeah. And, you know, it also caught amazing live events. Comet shoemaker Levy 9 hitting Jupiter. Oh, I remember seeing those images. Spectacular crash. Yeah. And tracking supernovae, watching stars being born and dying, peering at black holes, it gave us a dynamic view of the universe. It was just had such a long, productive life, over 30 years now. So here in 2025, is it? Is it still going? Remarkably, yes. It's still operational, hmm. still sending back valuable data. Even after all this time, that's amazing longevity for a space mission. It is. Of course, there have been uh, some technical issues. Gyroscope failures, for example. Gyros help it uh, point accurately. Right. Needs those to stay stable. But NASA's been very clever. They've developed ways to operate it, even with fewer working gyros like a one gyro mode now. Really innovative solutions to keep it working. Just squeezing every last bit of science out of it. So what's it focused on these days? It's still doing unique science. Key surveys in ultraviolet and visible light, which newer telescopes like JWST don't cover in the same way. Ah, so it complements the newer missions. Exactly. They work together often. Hubble is also crucial for time domain astronomy, seeing how things change over time. And it contributes to big mapping projects like Cosmos Web and Goods. Still a major player. So the story isn't quite over yet. What's the outlook? How much longer? Well, the hope is it could operate into the late 2020s, maybe even a bit beyond. There's even been talk, though nothing's funded, about maybe a robotic mission to boost its orbit, extend its life further. I'll still keep it going even longer. We'll see. Ah. But regardless, its legacy is secure. The discoveries, the technology, the sheer inspiration 
it's immense. Absolutely. And uh, you mentioned resources for people wanting to learn more. Oh, right. If all this has you curious about space, check out the Space Info Club. It's www.spaceinfo.club. They offer some great free courses. Good tip. So thinking about Hubble, it started with this major flaw, right? A huge setback. A potential mission killer, yeah. But they fixed it, and it became this revolutionary tool that's still contributing decades later. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? What other big challenges, things that look impossible right now, might actually hold the key to huge breakthroughs if we just find the right fix? 